واشنگٹن ڈی سی میں موجود یہ یادگاریں امریکہ میں مساوات اور انسانی حقوق کے لیے کی جانے والی جد و جہد کی زندہ مثالیں ہیں لیکن آخر وہ کون سی شخصیات یا تاریخی لمحات ہیں جو کہ ان مونیمنٹس میں چھپے ہیں یہ جاننے کے لیے میں جا پہنچا امریکی تاریخ کے ایک ماہر سی آر گبس کے گھر Hi, Mr. C.R. Gibbs. Yes, indeed. Well, this is Aman Azar from Voice of America. How do you do today? Pleasure to meet you. This is the site of two statues that represent an important and continuing struggle in the history of, of equity, uh, justice, and civil rights uh, in the United States. So this is the Emancipation Statue. The thing about this is it, it seems as though the black man is, is, is in too servile a position that he is at Lincoln's feet. Uh, although the, the initial idea was to show Lincoln freeing him, he even noticed he has, he, his shackles are broken. He is, we think, in the act of rising uh, to, to freedom and an act of rising to legally recognized personhood. Straight ahead of us is a 17-foot uh, statue done by the sculptor Robert Burks in honor of Mary McLeod Bethune, educator and civil rights icon. And the thing about it is this is probably the earliest statue of a woman on federal parkland in the United States. And the central idea behind this statue is that Mrs. Bethune is handing off, I think, uh, the, the legacy, her legacy, to the children. So when you say that, you mean the gesture of the woman handing over that will? Yes, yes. To the and, children. And so, it, and, and a portion of her will is memorialized in this uh, scroll that goes around the monument. She says, I, I leave you love, I leave you hope, I leave you the challenge of, of developing. And uh, this is an important part of her task. Oh, so we have arrived pretty much at the monument there and then. So where are we? Mr. We're Gibbs, here now at the African-American Civil War Memorial. It commemorates the service of 18,000 Union soldiers of African descent in the Civil War. It's, it's one of DC's newer, newer monuments, uh, uh, not that long ago, just a few years ago. It seeks to commemorate the services of hundreds of thousands of men of African descent. And it depicts what's called, the formal name of, this, of the group is the Spirit of Freedom. Right. And it, the Spirit of Freedom overlooks the services of the soldiers and the sailors. As we walk around, we'll also get a sense of what they were fighting for, because in the back of the statue, and this is uh, done by Ed Hamilton, you have the families. Oh, uh, the families yeah, the of families. Uh, who? The, these are the families of the sailors and the soldiers. This is the reason that they fought. Yeah, this is unique in the respect that the handful of national memorials and monuments that depict black people at all usually don't show the families. And this is another aspect of this memorial that makes it so unique. Uh, Would you explain a little bit what does it really symbolize? Uh, well, the, the, the primary focus is, is the stone as, as, and, and the stone of hope. This is a gigantic and uh, outsized symbolic understanding of how somebody can surmount their obstacles early in life, how they can come and make a contribution to themselves and to the world as well. And, and clearly this emerging from the stone. Yeah, stone which is, cut in half. Th th that's right, he's, he's emerged. And we see him, understandably, coming out of the stone, but it's the stone of hope. He is emerging from hope 
uh, a fully formed individual who understands and personifies that spirit of hope, not only for his generation, but for generations to come. Hmm. Well, I also want to ask you, I mean, what does these powerful symbols mean for today's race relations in the United States? If there is nothing else that these symbols do, it, it, it is hope that it continues to inspire and indeed provoke thought and action by the current generation.